Hi, I'm Karthik and uh, I'm here to present my project which I've done in the EC Department of University of Florida uh, in the WL6509 wireless mobile communications under Mr. Dr. Stepang Wu. Uh, before I start the session, I would like to congratulate Mr. Wu for doing an impressive job in this course. I'd also like to thank him for all the knowledge that he has showered over me throughout the semester. So let's begin. Uh, the uh, title of my project is uh, the simulation of the multi-carrier CDMA in uh, edit-to-wide Gaussian noise and Rayleigh channel using MATLAB. So our entire scope of the project is going to verify, simulate and analyze the effects which are going to be evident on the data transmission once they pass through these particular channels. So we'll talk about these channels in, in detail as we move forward. So let's talk about a few essentials which are required before we go over to the result section. The first is the CDMA, which stands for the Code Division Multiple Access. Uh, it's nothing but a multiple access scheme in which the same frequency bandwidth is being shared by all the users. As we are familiar, Sorry for the interruption. Uh, so we're talking about CDMA in general. So CDMA stands for the Code Division Multiple Access, and it's a multiple access scheme in which all the users share the same frequency spectrum. And the only difference between a user and then user next to him will be an orthogonal code which will be assigned to him. This is very different from the other techniques we have, being FDMA and CDMA, where in FDMA we use uh, frequency divided channels where each channel is assigned to a particular user for a given amount of time and in CDMA we use the approach of splitting the spectrum into time slots which are again assigned to the users. In CDMA when the code is orthogonal we have many advantages which can be gained through this. Here you can see the entire frequency spectrum is divided in codes each orthogonal code is assigned to a single user and the user is actually using the entire spectrum. All users are transmitting the same spectrum but the only difference will be the code assigned to them. It has many advantages and one of them is the efficient use of the scarce spectral resource. As we have seen the spectrum is limited, it's not unlimited. So we have to employ various efficient techniques to use it properly and this is one of them. And as I've said the orthogonal codes help in the reduction of the intersymbol interference which is caused due to the noise by the users which are using the system. But it has a few drawbacks too due to the essential power control which is required because everybody is using the same channel so power is the only criterion which separates them along with the codes which are being employed. It also has a high code channel interference ratio which can be removed easily. And uh, the next will be OFDM which is orthogonal frequency division duplexing. Uh, it is a standard frequency duplexing uh, division multiplexing scheme in which the data is encoded on multiple carrier frequencies. We have a large number of these subcarriers which are placed close to each other and we carry data simultaneously. So this is how it looks. And OFD, this is a normal spectrum. This is a normal spectrum and this is how the OFDM spectrum looks. The entire spectrum is divided into subspectrums, which are subcarriers, which will carry the data individually but simultaneously. So, uh, so, in theory, it has so many advantages again. First, we have saved a lot of bandwidth because uh, these are all placed close to each other. So, there can be many of these channels, uh, many of them will fit into the the entire length of the spectrum which we're using currently and it effectively reduces frequency selective fading because um, a noise component present at a particular frequency is not going to limit the performance of the entire system as a whole because the data is going to go through in the other subcarriers. It also eliminates ISI and IFI being intersymbol interference and the frame interference. Moving over to coming to 
multi-carrier CDMA, which is the crux of the project which I'm presenting today. So we have already seen the various advantages we have in uh, CDMA and OFDM techniques, but to improve the efficiency of them individually, it's a pretty hard task, but together, the efficiencies achieved are much, much higher. As a result, NPCDMA was proposed. Uh, it stands for Multi-Carrier Core Division Multiple Access, which is nothing but a combination of OFDM and CDMA. And it is formed by the serial concatenation of OFDM and CDMA systems, where each symbol and CDMA is spread with core chips and has been transmitted over several subcarriers. So here you can see the spectrum of uh, CDM, uh, DS CDMA here, which is uh, a singular spectrum where everybody is using different codes but no subchannels. Going over to OFDM, we have many subchannels, but there are no specific codes in this. And when you come over to MPCDMA, we have subchannels with specific codes. So, in general, MPCDMA uh, spreads each user symbol in the frequency domain. That is, each user symbol is carried over multiple parallel subcarriers, but it is phase shifted, typically 0 or 180 degrees, according to a code value. Uh, the code value differs per subcarrier and per user. The receiver then combines all the subcarrier signals by weighing these to compensate for the varying signal strength and undo the core chips. The receiver can separate signals of different users because they all have different code values. Moving over, this is how our MCCDMA signal is generated. Uh, let's assume a signal train, a data train coming from the transmitter, uh, which is DK. It is spread over the spectrum using the codes, and uh, it is then converted the serial train is converted to parallel using a serial to parallel converter which is then modulated on L subcarriers of the OFDM transmitter. So the serial train is split parallelly and each of the parallel split data is sent over to different subcarriers which are present in OFDM system. So uh, as a result of this it has many huge and wide advantages which include reduction of interchannel interference and it also offers frequency diversity uh, and uh, one of the uh, one of the peculiar and uh, suitable and essential advantages which are achieved by this process is high data rate and it also mitigates frequency selective fading as we already discussed in OFDM because uh, the narrow band carriers are orthogonal in nature and the symbol duration is generally longer than the delay spread so the probability of the fades fading affecting all channels at the same time is very less and as a result of the system performance is greatly improved. It also goes that the synchronization is easier because we use large long symbol durations. Coming over to Walsh codes, uh, these are the codes that have been used for spreading the uh, CDMA signal coming from the user. Uh, these codes are orthogonal in nature and are very efficient in reducing the multi-ax interference. And these are generated using the Hadamard matrix, where a Hadamard matrix is a square matrix in which each row and column is orthogonal to every other row and column. Initially, we start off with a zero matrix, which is uh, performed, and a uh, uh, Hadamard transform is performed over the zero matrix, which in turn results in a Hadamard matrix where each row and column of the Hadamard matrix is a Walsh code of length n. And this is an example.